ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه واله وصحبه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى describes himself in the Quran with certain names and attributes that each and every single one of us are aware of in fact these characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have been mentioned reiterated repeated over and over again such that we are absolutely certain without a shadow of a doubt that these are the characteristics of Allah Jalla wa'ala that he's able to do subhanahu wa ta'ala what these characteristics entail Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to himself as al-alim as al-allam al-ghuyub the one who subhanahu wa ta'ala who knows absolutely everything the one who knows about the unseen he subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to himself as Sami' al-Basir, the one who hears every little detail and he sees absolutely everything as well. He says subhanahu wa ta'ala, huwa Allahu alladhi la ilaha illa hu alimul ghaybi wa shahada. He is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None has the right to be worshipped except for him. Alimul ghayb. He is the one that knows about the unseen. He sees it all. Jalla wa ala. He says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Qul, in tukhfu ma fi sudurikum, aw tubduhu ya'lamhu Allah, wa ya'lamu ma fi s-samawati wa ma fi l-ard, wallahu ala kulli shay'in qadir. He says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, say, that whether you hide things in your chests, or you conceal things within you, or you do them out in the open, ya'lamhu Allah, Allah Jalla wa ala knows about it. وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ He knows about everything that takes place in the heavens and everything on the earth. وَاللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ He subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do all things subhanahu wa ta'ala. He then commands the servants of Allah. He implores them, commanding them to know that he is the one who knows everything. وَعْلَمُوا he says, أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي مَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ فَحْذَرُوا. So now he says that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knows what is inside of yourselves. فَحْذَرُوا. So beware. These names and these attributes, these characteristics of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, is something that each and every single Muslim believes in, and he is certain about. And these names are repeated over and over to the extent that even young children can declare that Allah sees and Allah knows and Allah hears all things. But in reality, the Muslims do not really believe in this. The reality is that the Muslims are from the people, unfortunately, a vast majority of them that do not really believe that Allah sees or Allah hears. Oh Allah knows about every single detail. Because if this belief was a reality, if this belief was a reality, that he subhanahu wa ta'ala is Sami'ul Basir, he sees and he hears and he knows about every detail and he declares everything that he will see subhanahu wa ta'ala, then truly and surely our lives should be different to the lives of the disbelievers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surely and truly, when we are by ourselves, when there is no one around us, we will still fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the Muslim knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more closer to him than his own jugular veins. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees your reality, sees what you do in the secret, sees what you do in the, your private circles. When the doors are closed and locked, when there is no one in your home other than yourself, how do we truly react? How do you behave? Do you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do you remember these characteristics, these attributes of Him seeing and knowing and hearing? Or do we forget about Him subhanahu wa ta'ala? How true has it become that the vast, the vast majority of the Muslims across the world, from all different ages and backgrounds, fear the sound of steps walking up the stairs more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? They fear the doors being opened and unlocked. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeing and hearing and knowing about what he is doing. How strange has it become that mankind are fearing the creation more than they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Nolly, surely, truly, the ones that really fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the ones that fear him in the unseen. They fear him when they're, in, when they're in private. Our brothers or sisters in Islam, the life has unfortunately developed itself such that when a person is, in his, when a person is by himself in his private gatherings and there is no one around him, he can choose any of the kabair, any of the sins that are major in the sight of Allah and simply select them without anyone knowing other than himself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He can sit with his device, a phone, or a laptop, even a television, and select any sin he wants to do. And no one will know about it other than himself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the malaika he has decreed, Jalla wa ala, to write down the deeds that we will commit. The so servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala know that the true meaning of Allah being the one who sees and he hears and the one who knows about every detail is that he knows what you are doing when you are by yourself. Every sin you commit in the private, not only does Allah Jalla wa ala know about it, but it's a means for all of the good deeds that you've come with to be destroyed and obliterated. Just like how hasanat, just like how good deeds erases and it wipes away sins, bad deeds will erase and wipe away good deeds. But bad deeds that are done in private, when you think nobody knows about it, will obliterate and destroy major, major good deeds that you spent your life trying to achieve. Major good deeds that you've dedicated years, decades towards to acquire and achieve. Sins in private will obliterate them all. Thawban radiyallahu an. He narrates in a hadith reported by Ibn Majah and Ahmed and declared authentic by many of the scholars of hadith like Shaykh Al-Labani rahimahullah ta'ala and others. He says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says لَأَعْلَمَنَّ أَقْوَامَ مِنْ أُمَّتِي يَأْتُونَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ بِحَسَنَاتٍ أَمْثَالِ جِبَالِ تِهَامَةٍ بَيْضَى فَيَجْعَلُهَا اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ هَبَاءً مَنْثُورًا He says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam لَأَعْلَمَنَّ أَقْوَامَ مِنْ أُمَّتِي I know of a group of people from my ummah that will come on the day of judgment with good deeds that will reach the skies like mountains that are white. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will obliterate them, will make them particles of dust. Good deeds that will reach the skies like mountains. But Allah jalla wa ala will destroy them completely. Thawban radiyallahu anhu he says, Ya Rasulullah, Sifhum lana. Describe these people for us. Tell us who these people are. Allah nakuna minhum wa nahnu la na'lam. So we don't be from them because we didn't know who they were. Faqala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ama innahum ikhwanukum wa min jildatikum wa ya'khudhunu min al-layl kama ta'khudhun. They are people. That, you are, that are your brothers. They have the same skin as you, the same color as you, as in they are human beings. And they take from the night prayers like how you take from the night prayers. They do same worship as you. 
Some of the scholars of Islam, they say, for him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to describe these people with these descriptions, indicate they were people that came with mighty acts of worship. For he described them like the Sahaba. They are your brothers. They worship Allah like how you worship Allah. They pray in the night like how you pray in the night. And we know the Sahaba's act of worship were great and major. So he describes them like this, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. However, then he says, وَلَكِنَّهُمْ أَقْوَامِ However, they are people. إِذَا خَلَوْ بِمَحَارِمِ اللَّهِ إِنْتَهَكُوهَا That when they are, when they are by themselves, when they are secluded, they take from the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They take from the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning they sin and they indulge in the prohibited matters. Oh brothers or sisters in Islam, the sign of Allah Jalla wa ala seeing you and knowing about you and hearing all of your details. The sign of this, the athar, the outward sign of this is that the servant of Allah Jalla wa ala must, when he's by himself, when he's secluded in his private room, he must stay away from sin. Because surely Allah Jalla wa ala knows you. He knows about your details. He knows what you are doing. He hears you and he sees you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the one that indulges in sin, the one that falls into the prohibited matters, and he looks for those moments of secrecy, those moments of being in a private location, those moments of his parents leaving his home, or, they, or his spouse leaving his home, children waiting for moments of seclusion, or adults waiting for those moments of privacy, to sin and to take the rights of Allah Jalla wa ala. Know that this is a sign that not only do you, not only do you really not believe in Allah Jalla wa ala being the one who sees and he hears and he knows, but it's a sign of you destroying all of your good deeds. Furthermore, the ulama of Islam, they mention this in itself, this in itself is a characteristic that resembles none other than the munafiqeen. The munafiqeen, the hypocrites, in the sight of Allah Jalla wa ala, were people that did this very thing. They used to worship Allah Jalla wa ala in the open. But in moments of privacy and secrecy, they used to show their distaste for Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Thus they would commit kufr behind the backs of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his sahaba. Behind the backs of the believers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَسْتَغْفُونَ مِنَ النَّاسِ وَلَا يَسْتَغْفُونَ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَهُوَ مَعَهُمْ They were people that feared the people. But I didn't fear Allah Jalla wa ala, even though Allah Jalla wa ala was with them in his seeing, was with them in his knowledge, was with them in his hearing, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the ulama of Islam, they say, the one that continues to sin in private. Not only has he questioned the characteristics of Allah, which is in a sight of kufr anyway. Not only has he obliterated all of his major good deeds, but he has taken from his leaders, the munafiqeen. He's taken from the characteristics of those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala detests. Those that will be from the lowest pits of the hellfire. Uthman radiyallahu an, Uthman ibn Ufan radiyallahu an, he used to say, لو أن عبدا دخل بيت في جو في بيت And if a person was to enter his house and enter his rooms at a time when no one is around, this is what defines the person, he says. If you really want to see a person, then look at him what he does when he's in his room and there is no one around. And no one will know about him. And no one will speak about what he's about to do. If you want to define a person, then see what he does during this moment. He says, radiyallahu ta'ala an, if he worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he is somebody that is truthful. He is somebody that Allah jalla wa ala would open other doors of worship for him. But if he, decides, if he decides to fall into the prohibited matters, then he is a sinful servant. That Allah Jalla wa ala will only open other doors of sin for him. If you really want to know an individual, then look towards him in a private gathering. If you want to know who you truly are, then look to see which avenue you take. When you are by yourself, when you are in a room when there is no one around, when every person has left and you are left with your devices, 
with the doors of your rooms or your houses locked and closed? Which action, which avenue do you walk towards? Which action do you now begin to do? Who do you begin to remember? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the enemy of the believers, the shaitan himself. Do you begin to perform salah and read the Quran, which were the characteristics of the private action of the noble, pious, righteous before us? Or do you begin to indulge in sin, selecting from the lists of the kabair, of the greatest sins in the sight of Allah, and doing them behind the backs of people, behind the backs of mankind, forgetting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you, and he knows you, and he hears every sin that you're, commit, you're, you're, you're continuously committing. Fear Allah, O oh brothers or sisters in Islam, in your private gatherings, in your private sittings, just like how you're meant to fear him, just like how you portray you fear him in the open gatherings. O oh brothers or sisters in Islam, no oh brothers or sisters in Islam, Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali, he says that the one who commits sins in the private and he forgets about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he looks and he yearns for these sittings so that he may commit sins over and over. He would only lead himself to destruction for Allah Jalla wa ala will allow for him to fall into sins after sins after sins. And thereafter, he would fall into sins in the open. And thereafter, he would completely rid himself Removing from his heart the kalima of Tawheed. Because the first step of destruction is forgetting Allah in your private gatherings. The next step is forgetting Allah in your open gatherings. And the next step is forgetting Allah in your hearts. This is the sunnah, the sunnah of Iblis. When he wants to divulge, when he wants to make people, make the servants of Allah digress and follow a path that Allah detests. He begins by calling them to sins in the private. Because a person forgets Allah by himself. He will forget Allah after amongst people. And then he will forget Allah in his heart. This is the sunnah of Iblis. Thus, O oh brother, O oh sister in Islam, that waits for those moments of secrecy, that waits for those moments of privacy to take from the rights of Allah. Know that this is a slippery, slippery slope that will lead you to kufr in its entirety. What you hold so dearly in your heart, the kalima of tawheed, the kalima of faith, la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, what you're trying to hold and safeguard and protect, what you know would be the one thing that will take you out of the fire and enable you to enter into paradise. This is in jeopardy. Every single time you take from the rights of Allah, in secrecy and in private. And this is why the Salaf, whenever they were advised, whenever they were, whenever they were called to give advice, they would all advise in the same manner. قال رجل لوهيب بن الورد رحمه الله تعالى He said, اغني. A man came to Wahib ibn Ward and he said to him, اغني. Warn me. Advise me. Give me something to say. What do you want me to do? He said to him, Ittaqillah, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fear him more when the people, fear him more when the people do not see you. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fear him more when the people do not see you. It was asked to one of the scholars of the Salaf. Someone said to him, how can I teach myself to lower my gazes? How can I teach myself to not look at the face of women and to lower my gazes? He said to him, by the knowledge, by the knowledge that Allah will always see you better than you looking at a woman. Allah will see you better than the vision that you have of a woman. Allah will see you better and more clearly than what you would ever be able to see when you lay your eyes upon a woman. A man came to Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah ta'ala, Hamid al-Khalqani. And he said to him, oh Imam Ahmad, oh Imam Ahmad, ya Aba Abdullah. هذه القصائد الرقاق الذي في ذكر الجنة والنار he says أي شيء تقول فيها I have a line of poetry about Jannah and Nar about paradise and hellfire what do you say about it? what's your response to it? because Imam Ahmad didn't used to like 
anashids or poetry other than that of al-akhirah and other than that of al-islam so he asked him what's your view of imam ahmed about these lines of poetry imam ahmed says to him what are these lines so he begins singing to imam ahmed and he says idha ma qala li rabbi am astahyayta ta'sini wa tukhfi adh-dhanb an khalqi wa bil isyani ta'tini Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala, he closed the door of his house and he walked towards the end of his room and he began weeping and he asked Hamid al-Khalqani to continue to repeat these lines of poetry. إِذَا مَا قَالَ لِي رَبِّي أَمَا اسْتَحْيَيْتَ تَعْصِينِي وَتُخْفِ الذَّنْبَ عَنْ خَلْقِي وَبِالْعِصْيَانِ تَأْتِينِي إِذَا مَا قَالَ لِي رَبِّي And when my Lord will say to me Weren't you embarrassed of me when you used to commit sins? You would hide your sins from my creation. But your sins, you would come to me with it all the time. Imam Ahmad, he cried. And he weeped over and over. Because has this not become true for us all? Have we not become embarrassed? Are we not ashamed to sin in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What are we going to say to him? When we were more afraid of the creation, concealing our sins from them. But to Allah jalla wa ala, we came with them over and over again. Aqulu qawli hada, wa astaghfirullah hari wa lakum wa risa'il muslimin. Wa astaghfiruh, inna Allah ya ghafur rahim. الحمد لله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وبعد. Our brothers and sisters in Islam. Last week we spoke about the importance for those who are in authority, parents, husbands, those of authority over other people, to make sure they examine and they look towards the friends of their subjects, the friends of their children, the friends. Of the people they have authority over. Because we said as how the Prophet وسلم, says, a Rajul, a man is upon the religion of his friend. A man is upon the religion of his friend. And we spoke about many examples and many dangers of friends and their influencing and their ability to influence our children and those we have authority over. And thus today, inshallah ta'ala, to the very same people I speak to. Those of authority, fathers and mothers, husbands, wives, those of authority over other people, elder siblings over younger siblings. Look and examine the private life of your children. See what they do when they are by themselves. See what takes them so long in their bathrooms or in their toilets. What do they do when their doors are closed in their rooms? What do they do when they are by themselves? Don't leave with them, as some of our teachers used to say, don't leave with them the greatest enemy of a servant of Allah by themselves. Don't leave with them these phones, these devices, iPads and laptops, where they're simply able to choose any of the sins Allah Jalla wa Ala detests and commit them without anyone knowing at all. Some of our teachers used to say, how strange has the world become? That you can sit in front of the Kaaba on the most noble days of the year and in your pocket you have access to every kufr and every sin that the shaitan has called mankind towards. Thus, O oh fathers, O oh mothers, O oh brothers and sisters, for those of you who have authority over others, make sure you examine, you investigate. And you have a permissible level of spying. Because this permissible level of spying is not just permissible, but it's obligatory upon our children to see what they do in their private moments. Because it's not normal. It's not normal for them to be in places that are secluded for long, long times. 
except they are doing something. Their hearts haven't yet truly understood the implications of Allah being Sami'ul Basir, of Allah being the one who sees and the one who hears. Their hearts haven't yet truly understood the implications of Allah knowing all details of mankind. Thus, at this moment, at this current moment, they fear you or they have some more level of fear for yourselves as parents over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thus, it's your responsibility to ensure they are not left alone with actions, with a means, with avenues to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when disobedience of Allah jalla wa'ala, as Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali spoke about, as we mentioned in the first khutbah of the khutbah, when disobedience begins in privacy, it will grow until it becomes disobedience in open circles, which will grow until you find disobedience entirely in a person's heart. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us all. We ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to worship him in the open and in the secret. We ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us truly understand all of his names and characteristics. We ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala for safeguard of our iman for ourselves and our families. We ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala for jannat al-firdaus. Allahumma izz al-islam wal muslimin. Allahumma adhill al-shirk wal mushrikin. Allahumma inna ka'afun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'fu anna. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Qumu lissalat.